Hi, my name is Steve Jaynes, and welcome back to this audio class on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 361, The Power of the Holy Spirit, part one. We will learn what Jesus taught his disciples so they could understand the scriptures and have the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless and welcome to the power of the Holy Spirit. Hey, take your Bibles, go to Luke chapter 24. We're going to see the kingdom of God and the means to do that is when we receive Holy Spirit. Luke 24, 44. Well, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about this. This is the this this is after Jesus Christ has been crucified, buried, been in the earth for three days and three nights. God raised him from the dead, and now he's hanging out with his disciples and stuff for forty days before he ascends into heaven. And this is that period of time between. And he said unto them these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures he taught them the scriptures so they could understand it verse 46 and he said unto them Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to raise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins, remission is the same as forgiveness, forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and ye are witnesses of these things, and behold, I send the promise of my Father, upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high see he says it's coming remember I told you about the promise of the father earlier it was called the comforter the Holy Ghost he says but you tarry you wait here in this city city here the city of Jerusalem and you will be endued or clothed with that power from on high that power is going to be available to you. Keep your finger here and go to Acts. So we go through John, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, and we're going to read verse 4 and verse 8. Okay, and it says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says, Ye have heard of me. Once again, he's telling them to wait. Wait for that promise. The promise. Down in verse 8 it says, But ye shall receive power, power, after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. They were to wait there for the power. He told them it was going to come. Go back to Luke chapter 4. 24 verse 50 and it says and he led them out as far as Bethany and he lifted up his hands and he blessed them and it came to pass that while he blessed them he was carried apart from them and carried up into heaven and they worshipped him and returned to Chicago no no Jerusalem Jerusalem with great joy see they did what he said he said wait in Jerusalem and they went and they waited in Jerusalem and they continued in the temple praising and blessing God amen now this is the ascension this is where when Jesus Christ ascends up into heaven and they were asked to stay in the city of Jerusalem and they continued in the temple praising and blessing God now go to Mark chapter 16 Mark chapter 16 it's the next book towards the front Mark chapter 16 is the last chapter in Mark and we'll start in verse 15 and see we're looking at that period of time between when he was raised from the dead and the ascension 
and in 15 it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, or every one. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, be made whole, but he that believeth not is damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into the heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth preaching everywhere, and the Lord working with them, and confirmed the word with what? Signs following. Amen. Signs follow them that believe. Believers have signs follow. And they're not picket signs. They're the signs, miracles, and wonders. The things that we just read about, how they were, they were able to speak with new tongues, they ate anything deadly, or they got bit by a deadly snake or something like that. It wouldn't hurt them. They would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. They were now going to have something that gave them a power source in their lives. A power source to do these healing miracles, those type of things that we just read about. Now let's go back to Acts chapter 1, verse 1. And we're going to continue reading on this period of time between Jesus Christ being raised from the dead and his ascension into heaven. And we'll start in verse 1 of uh, Acts 1. It says, And the former treaties have I made. The former treaties is talking about the book of Luke. The, Luke wrote the book of Acts, and he also wrote Luke. Okay. <laughs> then it says, O philosophers, that means beloved of God. It's not a person's name. All that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, through the Holy Spirit, he had given commandments unto his apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion, or after his death, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to what? The kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father which said, Ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with Holy Spirit not many days hence. Then they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times nor the season which the Father has put in his own power. But ye shall receive power, power, after the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld him, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you unto heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And they just sat there and watched him go into the clouds. Pretty wild, pretty neat. And the rest of the chapter 1 tells about the things that they did after Jesus Christ was ascended up into heaven until uh, the day of Pentecost. But we're going to skip down to chapter 2, verse 1, and talk about the day of Pentecost the things that happened at that time. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there 
came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit. That thing that they've been waiting for since Genesis 3.15. The thing that Jesus kept saying, I'm going to send the Comforter to you. And it's going to help you. It's expedient. It's profitable to you. Jesus, between the time of his death and his ascension, kept saying, it's coming. Just be waiting for it. It's coming. And you're going to get it. And you're going to receive power. Jesus Christ said, you'll be able to speak with new tongues. If any deadly thing bothers you, it won't harm you. And you'll be able to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. He says, this is what's coming. Get ready for it. And so they did. They waited. They didn't go to Chicago. They stayed right there in Jerusalem waiting for that to happen. And then uh, that's what it's talking about in verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They got born again. They got Holy Spirit. And they began to speak. Who did the speaking? They did. It says, it says right there, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit, God, gave them the what? Utterance. God gave them the utterance. Who did the speaking? The apostles did the speaking. They moved their throat, their lips, their tongues, and they spoke in tongues. They weren't really concerned of what it said because that was God's job. God did the utterance. So they just spoke in tongues. They were sitting there that day. They knew they were going to get power from on high. They got the power from on high. They started breathing in breathing out and they started to speak in tongues simply easily done they moved their lips their throat their tongue they spoke the words they didn't think that much about what they were speaking they knew that God would give them the utterance and God gave the utterance they did the speaking as God the spirits gave them the utterance look at verse 5 and there were dwelling at, Jer- at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galilean? And how hear we every man in our own tongue or language wherein we were born, Pothians and Medes and Ameliites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia and Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome and Jews and proselytes Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongue, in our language, the wonderful works of God. That day, there, as those men spoke in tongues, it was the first time that it was available to get born again, and as they spoke in tongues, the people there all said, they're speaking the wonderful works of God. Wow, what a great day that was. They were speaking the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed, verse 12, and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. And I'll tell you something. People still do this today. They'll make fun of people who speak in tongues. Oh, they're full of new wine. But Peter, he didn't take that crap. And Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice, and he said to them, Ye men of Judea, And all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. These are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. It's nine o'clock in the morning. These guys ain't been out drinking. It says, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And we looked at the prophet Joel earlier. Remember that? 
And it came to pass in the last day, says God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servant and on my handmaiden I will pour out in those days of my Spirit and they shall prophesy. That's what was written in the book of Joel. We read it earlier. That mankind, there was a time coming after Jesus Christ accomplished it for everybody, that mankind could once again have Holy Spirit. Not just on a chosen few. And when they got it, they were able to manifest power. Power. We have power in this day and time to live by if we want to believe God's Word and let God's Word speak for us. We have power to be righteous that we looked at earlier. We also have power to speak in tongues, to heal, to be healed, to have miracles, signs, and wonders as we need them at our command because we take the place of the absent Christ, which is pretty neat, huh? Let's go down to verse 21. And it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. That word saved is sozo. Me made whole. Body, soul, and spirit. Spirit. Not the same spirit that Adam had. A better spirit. That's right. One that you can't lose that will last forever. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, God's righteous servant, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. It says, Him being delivered by the Determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding it. For David speaketh concerning him. Remember David, King David, the second king of Israel? Remember I was telling you earlier about the things that he did? You know, with Bathsheba and all that. And remember I said that he believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness? And here's David. You know what he saw? He he says here, And for David speak concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. This is what David confessed and believed. He believed that Jesus Christ would come, that God's righteous servant would come. And he believed it, and he confessed it, and his heart was joyful about it. Because, verse 27, Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. Thou hast made known unto me the ways of life, and thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. He just, David, the reason David was righteous because he believed in Jesus Christ. You see that? He believed in Jesus Christ. He believed he would come. He says his soul rested in hope. He knew that he would come. That God would redeem mankind. God would be able to give mankind Holy Spirit. And it was because nothing that David did, nothing that me and you do, it's because we believe that Jesus Christ has accomplished for us. It for us. Look at verse 29. It says, Men and brethren, let me speak freely unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruits of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He seeing this, a force spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell or graved him, is a better translation. 
neither his flesh did see corruption. See, David kept confessing that uh, that Jesus Christ would be raised from the dead. He believed that. Thousands of years before Jesus Christ was even born. This Jesus had God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. And he's saying, we all saw Jesus Christ get raised up. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, he says, we got the promise, he shed forth this which you now see and hear. What did they see and hear? They saw and heard them speak in tongues and magnify God, the the wonderful works of God. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he said himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thy foals thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know it surely that God had made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. And do you see what's being taught here? He's teaching them how to get born again. You get born again by, by believing that God, well, first of all, what it says here, by confessing Jesus is Lord. He says, Jesus Christ is Lord and Christ. He's the Lord. He's the one that accomplished it. That's what we confess. We say, Jesus is Lord. The other thing it takes to get born again is to believe that God raised him from the dead. And he taught that. He says, and this Jesus has God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. So they have gotten the information to get born again. And now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. And they said unto Peter and unto the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, forgiveness of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of Holy Spirit. That simple. Boom. For the promise... Remember that promise of the Father? That promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. And when they had gladly received the word, were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Quite a, quite a meeting, huh? 3,000 souls said, I believe that. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And in fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And great fear or respect came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. What kind of well, wonders and signs? Must have been the things that Jesus told them to do, right? The things about healing people and casting out devils and you know, speaking in tongues. All that stuff that's available. And they all, and all that believed were together and all things common. They sold their possessions with an S and goods and departed to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and in a breaking of bread and from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and with singleness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved today Holy Spirit is available it's available Jesus Christ came he came 2,000 years ago or more. And it's available now for us to get born again. All we have to do is believe that Jesus Christ accomplished it for us. Confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. We can get born again. Have Holy Spirit. And walk around with power in our lives. Oh, what power we have if we'd only believe it. The power we have.
God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Would you like to manifest the power of God? Well, if you do, I would like to lead you in to speaking in tongues. Put away all your other reading material and listen to me. I will read some of the scripture and we will learn and manifest power from on high. Now, we can manifest power from on high. We can speak in tongues. It's available. As soon as you're born again and you learn the mechanics and the word, and we've been reading the word, we have an understanding of what's available to us now. And we have the ability to manifest God's Spirit. So if you would like to do that, I would like to lead you in to speaking in tongues. Now put all your other reading material away and listen to me. In the Gospel of John, chapter 20, and in verse 21 and 22, it reads like this. Then Jesus said unto them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. Just like God sent Jesus Christ, he is sending them, his disciples. We're disciples, right? We're disciplined, right? Verse 22 says, And when he had said this, after he said, I'm sending you, just like my father sent me, he said unto them, breathe in. The word in, in the King James is on, but it's breathe in. Then said he unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. We start by breathing in. We start by receiving Holy Spirit. We're going to manifest Holy Spirit. So we receive it. <sighs> Breathe in. <sighs> Breathe in. Breathe in the Holy Spirit. We believe, Romans 10, 9, and 10, we believe that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. We have confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord in our life. When we did that, we got born again, born of spirit. We now have Holy Spirit living within us. And once you have that Holy Spirit, you can manifest the power of God. You can manifest the power of God by speaking in tongues. Let's continue. In Acts chapter 2 and in verse 4, it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. They were filled with it. They had Holy Spirit in them and began to speak with other tongues. They did the speaking. They moved their lips, their throat, their tongues. They did all the mechanics of speech, and they began to speak. They began to speak with other tongues. Other tongues means a language to which they did not understand, as the Spirit, the Spirit is God, gave them the utterance. When we speak in tongues, it's up to us to do the speaking, but God gives the utterance. God gives the word. So when we start performing, when we start to pronounce, when we start to speak the words, they're words which God gives us, and it's in a language which we do not understand, but it's perfect praise, worship to God. Pretty wonderful, huh? Now, if you would like to manifest power from on high and speak in tongues, let's close our eyes. Let's take all distractions away from us. And just be quiet, quiet amongst yourselves, being quiet, thanking God for what you are about to receive, thanking God. 
And then when I say go, when I say start, then start to speak in tongues. And you will manifest that power from on high. You have the ability. You're born again. You have the spirit. And God has given you that good gift. So be quiet, thanking God, and now start speaking in tongues. You perform the words. You say the words. All of us, everybody. You're speaking the wonderful works of God. Anyone who is born again can speak in tongues. Keep speaking in tongues. You have the ability. If you can say one word, then you can say another and many words. Let's just keep speaking in tongues. Keep speaking in tongues to yourselves, in your mind, out loud. Shout it to the world. You're speaking in tongues. And later in this class, we will learn more about speaking in tongues. We'll learn the best way to do it and how to operate it. So it's great. But right now, you're speaking in tongues. Keep speaking in tongues. Speak in tongues, magnifying the Word of God, magnifying God, magnifying who you are in Christ. You have everything that God's Word says you, you have, and you can do it. Okay, let's stop. Isn't God wonderful? We just started speaking in tongues. We were magnifying God. We were speaking the wonderful works of God. It is perfect prayer, perfect praise, perfect worship. And like I said, we will learn more about this as we go through the class. But for right now, you're manifesting Holy Spirit. You're speaking in tongues. You have all the fullness of God living within you. I recommend that you speak in tongues much in your private prayer life. When you're alone by yourself, speaking in tongues, speak in tongues out loud, silently within your mind and in your, yourself. You can speak in tongues when you're with a group of people or when you're by yourself. When you're with a group of people, you just do it to yourself. Perfect praise, perfect worship, perfect prayer. Isn't that neat? And you're able to do that. So God bless you and continue with it as much as you can. And I can't wait to get back into this class in the next session.